Welcome back to the Nastagram RPG Podcast. This is our session zero for our new arc, Empire's End. Stick around and find out with the players about the game they're about to begin, the characters they choose, and how we flush things out. We'll see you back next week for episode one. My guts are running out, I'm slurring my speech. It's fun and forget you now. That's just more pool of my sleeping mouth. Why apologize for things all right, you guys want to play Star Wars? Sure, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Hell yeah! <clears throat> this is fun because um, you guys don't know anything about this game, and neither do I. We're just gonna wing it. All right, I, shoot I my know laser. that my parents is gonna be a Star Trek. So the fun <laughs> somehow. The, That's sick. the fun thing is after we finish up an arc, a couple arcs where we talk about how much we love collaboratively <laughs> building the world. Yeah, yeah. Now <laughs> I keep you a hundred percent in the dark while I craft every facet of the game. Perfect. Um, all right, so we're playing Star Wars West End uh, D6 action. Look which, at you with your West End Game Master screen. I don't remember most of the Vintage. rules. Oh, we're we're using together. it because this is the one, quote unquote, we know. And then I'm like, well, I don't really actually yeah, don't remember know. it that well. D6, that's um, so who's here? Say, say your names. Hi, I'm Dean. <laughs> if you guys don't know me by now, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's John. I'm here. Yep, Dan checking in. And Matt. Cool, yeah, this is a, a new uh, a new mix. First time Dan and Dean have been on together. They are, in fact, different people, not just two Ds. Um, Double well, D, to be specific. So w- this is going to be a kind of a modified session zero. Um, I have a game in mind. It might be pretty short, few sessions to it out. Um, I made the characters uh, mechanically, and I made right... I. I actually crushed down very, very short write-ups because I started to flush them out more and I realized that's what I want you guys to do. So there are six characters to choose from. I want you guys each to pick one of them. Quick background. You are all Imperial officers. Ooh. <laughs> are we the baddies? <laughs> so um, this uh, game takes place uh, like between New Hope, I'm sorry, between Empire and Return of the Jedi. Can I get a date, please? Uh, <laughs> before after four you haven't, ABY. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, and you you are staff senior staff officers aboard Rayco seventy two Alpha. Uh, you don't have to write this down. I have some cheats for you. Um, that is uh, replenishment and customs outpost seventy two Alpha in the Virac system. So uh, the Virac system is a system of six planets. Um, the most highly populated only has uh, maybe 150,000 people on. It's a pretty new colony of about 20 years. Uh, and essentially it's been set up. There's been some more developments. There is uh, Kuiper Corporation has a couple mining interests on the planet or uh, in the system. And uh, in recent years, as the population has increased and more ventures have uh Happened. There were also some more issues with uh, smuggling, piracy, and eventually the planetary government, uh, the council, formally requested uh, recognition from the imperial government. And uh, that process took a few years. It was granted. And s- you guys are part of the this station. So basically what happened, they... they brought out a modified Imperial Star Galleon. There was an existing pretty piecemeal uh, space station over the main planet uh, of Virax 2 that they had set up when the colony was first established 20 years ago. Um, and the Empire came out with a little task force. They basically rigged this Star Galleon up as the hub into the space station. They moved it away from the planetary orbit. It's now in between the second and third planets. And um, you guys are the staff on it. So before I, I'm going to give you sheets, you can read up plenty, plenty, plenty on it. But there's six roles you guys will have to choose from. Um, Matt, I'm going to upload this into Drive for you right now. What was the class of the vessel or station converted? I missed that part. A Imperial, a modified Star Galleon. 
the fuck? Where are we on the? Uh, are you shitting me? The old Star Wars galaxy map. Up there. He <laughs> 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 just waved cool. at the wall. Yeah. yeah, is this the one fucking file I didn't save separately? So Matt, I got a, a few files uploaded in the um, in the drive. I uh, made a new folder called Star Wars. Oh, I'm already in there, baby. And I'm gonna put one more in there. That's what she said. The files are. And sorry, you said pre-return post empire. <clears throat> uh, yes. All right, and you guys really want to nerd out? This is the T O and E. Nice. So this is. What you guys are going to pick from are these six. Matt, if you open that slide, it's got Definitely a. I can't see that. I don't want you guys to memorize this necessarily. <clears throat> I have it to give to all of you as well. Oh, cool. So, a bunch of handouts, but before I do that, these are read over a little bit about. So, open the R. Reiko 72 Alpha rolls, Matt. Um, yep. So, you're the six senior officers below the CO and the XO. Um, Medical and personnel officer, uh, hmm. coin communications and intelligence officer, operations officer, chief engineer, CAG commander of the air group, and tactical. Um, this is uh, really speaking my language, Josh. I thought you'd get hard for it. This ain't gonna be four <laughs> sessions. Just, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do everything I can to make this fucker forty <laughs> sessions. Um, so I I've tried to keep those write ups pretty dry. Because I want you guys to be able to flesh out these characters. So that's what we're going to do in this session zero. We're going to kind of do a little fate style um, with uh, little story Mm -hmm. write-ups. Looks like you wrote them as very matter-of-fact versus like the personality. I tried to keep them dry. Yeah, Mm -hmm. keep uh, the personality out of it. Keep uh, the motivations out of it. Except where I I have... And, and all I've made of the characters are just the mechanics, just the numbers. So that's already all done. Cool. Um, and so I'll give you whoever you pick. I mean, if you want to look at them, but I'd rather you pick it off kind of. Question. Um, yes. Uh, are we going to upload some of these to like, uh, you know, our various platforms so people can check them out? Instagram's probably the best way yeah. to do it. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Just so sure. people know what we're picking. And yeah. Especially I, with your flow I, chart diagram. I was thinking about using it on the resource page to cool. the website. Yep. Um, that's the gist. I will be honest. I would prefer if a player played the ops officer. Just because that's the senior of the six, and I would rather the senior person not be an NPC. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. Um, if really nobody wants to, then that's fine. Um, so when you pick your character, I'm going to give you your character sheet. Um, and what we're going to do is fate style. So everybody's going to write a, you know, a start of a story. Two, three sentences, really small, something your character has done. And pass that to your left. The next person is going to add to how they either interacted in that story, how they... Wow, I've never done this before, so this is new. Yep. Um, and that's going to go three times. You're going to need some paper for that there. We're going to need some fucking paper. <laughs> and then you have to take a picture of that paper and send it to Matt. Oh, my <laughs> it's God. a really fun way to do it. Um, <clears throat> and... But we're not we're not doing fate style aspects. Okay. We are going to use what we did in the D&D game. So um, either directly from those story elements or overall thinking about your character... Um, I want to come out of this session zero with your character a little bit more fleshed out personality wise. I want to know uh, the four things we're going to use to generate character points are uh, merit, ideal, flaw, and as many bonds as you feel that you have juice for, but at least one between the other characters. One between each. Uh, if you want, if you think there, you have something from the pass rounds, but a minimum of one. The more you come what up you with, in there? I'm sorry. a merit, uh, which I think I'm going to try to give you guys each a special ability, which I'm going to base off your merit, um, an ideal. Okay, so that's something that's in place of motivation. Uh, ideal is you know your, what your character strives to be, strives Motiva- motivation towards. goal. What's that? Motivation goal. Ideal. Motivation. So, so merit. Say more words. Ideal. Flaw yeah. and bond, right? But I'm saying you're describing ideal as a motivation, as a goal, as a something yeah. you're trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. Or mm, no. your your personal ideal. 
Okay. You, the, your your principle. Like, your principle. It would be your your nature if we were playing vampire. Got it. Um, and I also want to know who would play your character, what actor you would cast. Um. So, and I don't want to overwhelm you, but I do have. Joy. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there is plenty more info about the system overall, Matt. Um, the two-page Virac system. This is this is all wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, what, we so you don't have to have this memorized, stuff. but just stuff you can... This is homework. You can check, you can read up on in between games. I'm going to um, need a five-page essay on the politics of the Virax system. Yep. By nice, 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 nice. I didn't intend to get this much into it, but I, then I just kind of started to. <laughs> <laughs> they really need to work on their names. Virax 1, Virax 2, Virax 3, Virax 4. You know, I'm just not sensing a lot of effort. It'd be even better here. if just one of them was just like... <laughs> Random. <laughs> Spiegel's Flork. Varax 5. Um, so all, all the gist is there, um, but quick, uh, I will give you the overview of the system. Varax 1, sparse, Mars-like, rocky. Kuiper has a mining um, colony there. Varax 2 is uh, also sometimes just called New Calary. Um, that is the main settlement. It's a uh, very lush, a lot of native life, um, and it's in the Goldilocks. It's very region. much in the Goldilocks zone. Um, the population is about half Kaliri, which is a um, near human race, mm. and uh, the other half mostly humans, some mixed aliens. Like I said, one main, you know, settlement or city. Uh, and, the, and it's very wild. The rest of it's really kind of sparse villages and kind of outposts. The station that you guys are on are in between that planet and uh, VRX three, which uh, is not has no permanent habitation. Uh, Do VRX, we perchance orbit one of the two or three? No, uh, it the station did orbit two, but when the Imperials set it up, um, you pulled that away um, to be uh, a little bit more strategically located to cover the entire system. Um, Virax 4 uh, is a gas giant, uh, and Kuiper Corporation has a um, resource extraction site there. Um, then there's the VAD belt. That's the Virax asteroid and debris belt. Um, under a 1,000 years, which is like a second ago, two planets collided so it is basically an asteroid belt, but very irregular um, <clears throat> to the point where you it's it's not considered safe to hyperspace in or out of the system in front of it. It's just too um, unpredictable at this point. A little bit about the station. Um, like I said, the Star Galleon is kind of tied. So it's kind of like this modular piecework. Um of, of pre-existing and uh, added on components. The, uh, what was the cargo bay of the Stargallion is modified into a small hangar. Um, there's a reinforced TIE fighter squadron, um, a few other craft. Uh, there, the station has about 220, 230 Imperial, like actual military. Um, and it's supplemented um by about th- over 300 um, civilians, many of whom are, are basically contracted workers. There's just not enough military personnel to, to run everything that's required, um, and, and some of it is sort of just station personnel. Uh, so yeah. how, many, how many in a squadron? Uh, 12 nominally, um, and there is a uh, recently... Uh, and I should add, too... Six months ago is when the Star Galleon arrived. So you could have all been here for the whole six months. You could have arrived more recently if you kind of whatever you want your backstory. Um, but this has not been around for too long. It's really still kind of in the setting up process. Um, 12, uh, uh, 12 TIE fighters in a squadron recently um, was reinforced by a flight of TIE interceptors. Uh, there is also two small Corvettes, custom Corvettes, um, which are in the like 12 to 18 crew 
Um, Do they have interdiction <clears throat> capabilities? Actual, like, anti-hyperspace shit? Yes. No. Gravity wells to stop pirates from escaping? Nope. We need to get that retrofitted immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Whip that up. Um, any, um... Anybody interested uh, in any of these characters? I haven't even... Hey! Wait a second! Bro, dude! Holy crap! So uh, tell me your entire backstory and let me know exactly what you want to do. I feel like I'm in fucking political novel class. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so wait a minute. Reiko 72A is the... Is the is he still there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I, I okay, put the just slide over. Sure. I don't see his oh, lovely right. face. You know, I'm here. Reiko 72... Missing that Burberry. R- Reiko 72 <laughs> Burberry. is... Compa- what, Reiko 72 slash Avius. Avius is the... To, to, yeah, con- a- to- Avius is, is the Star Galleon. That's worse. That was bolted into this existing space station. They brought some like bulk freighters, added I on see. more components. So think of it as this big modular thing. This Star Galleon is, is the it's center. The military wing of the... the, the or- um, yeah, it's also it's it's the main power source. Got it's it. the hangar, but it's you, you couldn't just fly away with it. I mean, it's you you know, the station could be disassembled. Rake but it's 70, been and that was created by the colonists, and the empire's like, well, that's not going to suffice. Enter the avius. Rako seventy two is what the empire is calling what they've set up. Oh, okay. So you had this pre existing station. Empire says, fine. Well, we'll we'll get involved here between the the the. Planets Council and Kuiper Corporation both ask, you know, kind of pushing. Um, to be honest, Kuiper Corporation probably had more pull than this fucking uh, planet, uh, you know, the civilians did. Empire showed up. Six months ago. Six months ago with uh, the Stargallon Avius, um, a few other engineering craft. Uh, the Star Galleon was built, uh, was connected permanently into the station. A few more components were added on. Um, Got it. It's so now they are there to. It's fairly out of the way, but it's a resupply point for Imperial Navy. She's going to ask you, what's our interest? Um, resupply. Yeah. Uh, th- Protection of uh, of re- resources makes sense. There's uh, there's some valuable stuff, uh, especially that Kuiper's up to, and the planet is continuing to uh, to develop. It's very lush. There's a lot of natural resources there, um, and piracy and smuggling had become significant options. So um, significant problems. Is the Kuiper Corporation? Are they like? Are they originally based to this sector, nope. or are they from out of sector? Out of sector, and they're just they're big. Okay, and they're. Are they considered to be exploiting these resources, or are they kind of welcomed here? Um, th- I I suppose either opinion might matter, but the or or e- either opinion could exist. Sure, but they did not take anything um a- away. It's not like they showed up and this planet had already set up this mining outpost. Um. So, if anything, I think most of the planet's population, the average thought would be, hey, you know... It's work. It's work. Jobs, they offer yeah. employment. Um, it's bringing more resources and attention to the system. Um, there's a few that probably feel like they are a, a big, giant galactic corporation. That's, you know... <laughs> I was I, I kept getting thrown for a loop. I was like, where have I heard that? Kuiper? Yes. <laughs> he's, he was the... The Kuiper uh, belt? No, we were in our last uh, Fate game that we were trying out. Yeah. Is it Kuiper Belt something? Yes. What is it? It's uh, I couldn't tell you exactly it's the what it is. Ice belt. I'm pretty um, sure it's. it's yeah. Give me a two page write up on it. <laughs> All right. You got okay for one. It's for four, four, isn't it? It was a name. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, right. It was I a name somebody came that. up with. <laughs> but no, it was a name for the the uh, the head of security on in our fake game. Yeah. On Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. Know. I didn't come up with the name. I think got it. Uh, Who Jake did, but it was a cool name. Yeah, it's the the ice. Uh, the ring of ice and cosmic objects beyond ne- Neptune. Yep. Groovy. Um, Question. Yeah. Where does Admiral Purrington fit into the... <laughs> Just, <laughs> wait. Just wait. Just <clears throat> wait. I imagine there's some resentment towards the Kuiper Corporation in that they probably drew the Empire here to a certain extent. So if there's any anti-imperialists, they probably also don't like the Corporation. Fair thought. Um, also, you know, they're, they're probably, it's a colony, so, uh, they Protection's came, nice. Yes. Um, they did, however, come, you know, have a ton of independence. They're just out here doing their own fucking thing. 
Um, but that has its ups and downs. Is the two on the nose if I claim the uh, pilot? Nope. I, <laughs> I, 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 I wondered go if you would just go right for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's between him and the med- medical officer. Commander of the air group. Yeah. So, yeah, on that, I, I want you guys to be the you know intimately familiar with uh, your little section of that. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, chat with you guys a little one-on-one and make sure that you're comfortable because I want you to kind of be able to convincingly speak for your yeah. section. So you think you're going pilot? Yeah, I think so, yeah. If no one okay. takes the medical officer, can you NBC your old <laughs> doctor? <laughs> <laughs> the ball tar inspired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so no names, nothing. I haven't done anything. All I have is CAG and stats. Everything else is on you. It's that character you love to hate. I love him. Yeah. He's great. He's amazing. <laughs> oh, this is printed on such nice paper. I'd hate to digitize it. <laughs> I, d- I do have, like I said, I have it scanned. Uh, yeah. Or if you just I like that you gave it. more options than are needed. That was a smart play. Veteran dungeon master move, or in this case, game master. <laughs> Six out of Should four. Should be like Star Lord or something. <laughs> so CAG is off off the table. John's going to be the CAG. Commander of the air group. Your rank is lieutenant commander. Um, so you are uh, equal in rank, uh, but below billet wise ops. Gotcha. A lot of good, a lot of good options here. I tried to make them all interesting. Um, like they, I tried to come up basically with six characters that I I could want to play. <laughs> right, that's that's the way to do it, right? <clears throat> yeah, I'd play any of them to be honest with you. Matt, you got any ideas? Not really. Maybe medical. An aristocratic family. You're taking on the Avery role. And you guys can change the backgrounds if you want. Um, I don't really care. It's just I had more I had them more fleshed out and I stripped down but just enough to leave like why does my fucking doctor have like high skills in vibroblade and vibroblade parry <laughs> and and like sure, you know sure, sure. Uh, other things. So I, I right. just left enough to basically justify the skill spread that they had. That makes sense. That's fair. Just going to pencil it in here on my background. Best friend, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> what about you guys? What are you uh, leaning towards? I haven't even finished reading through all of them. This is a lot of homework. You want um, you want somebody to be the operations officer? I, I would prefer. Okay. Essentially running the state, running the show. Yeah, so there's, there's a, a CO and an XO. Got it. Who is um, the XO on here? Would it be the, the neither? Oh, okay. so if you They're if you on look on that fucking chart. sheet, oh, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> the XO is also um, changing. The current executive officer is leaving, and there is a new executive officer officer being sent. Uh, oh, so coming in. XO <laughs> XO is going to be here. <laughs> Ty. XO. <laughs> <laughs> Star buck buck buck. So the XO is going to be the oh, there's somebody from Com Force here. Yeah, motherfucker, <laughs> can't do anything fun. <laughs> he's he's just a second lieutenant observer. Yeah, what's going in my notepad? <laughs> and you're going out the airlock. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, Com Force uh, is is well, Comp Nor. Comp Nor. Is is the overall? They're they're basically like the Nazi Party. Essentially, they're they're the Commission for the Preservation of the New Order. Are they like is, the SS of? Um, the Nazi well, party? they have yeah. like an SS, which is Comp Force. That's like the military branch it. of it. Yeah, but they're like in the Empire. Most things in the Empire, like there already was a Navy. It just kind of became the Imperial Navy. But Comp Nor is this thing that's really. All about personal allegiance to the emperor and his fucking ideals of the new order. So, this observer is basically a, a glorified spy. <laughs> um, kind the, of, XO, the XO is a, is a um, the XO is a is an NPC. Yes, sick. And the CO. Oh, and the CO. <clears throat> and I, I did give. Um, I know you have a billion things to read on the second page of that the Iraq system. The, the first page is the actual system itself. The second page has a little bit of information about 
your station and uh, some key figures. So the Imperial governor, um, a few of the other people, a few civilians uh, that are named here. Matt says he's leaning doctor. Yes. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah, doctor, right. maybe engineer, but probably more more doctor. Got it. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm doctor. Boom. Doctor. Done. All right, Matt, I'm going to upload. What do you like, Danimal? You know, I'm reading through them, and they, like Josh said, they're all kind of pretty good. Yeah, they're all definitely playable. Yeah. Um, I just uploaded <clears throat> that um that character sheet, Matt. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the best way if you want to. You know, keep it electronic. I did not intend to have these fucking ones. I intended to digitize them, but I just couldn't do it in a format that wasn't taking me fucking forever. So that's why my handwriting is really chick, uh, chicken scratch because I just meant these for my own, like, sure. write them out really quick and then I was going to type them up. So quick question. Apologies, but also go fuck yourself. This, this org yeah. chart, this org chart is like, I'm going to put this like right near my breast and go to sleep with it and I, I love sh- <laughs> I love shit like this so much I made a game like this once that's why it, re- it reminds me of it it's so fun I love this shit but now um, the the the, the oh, P.S. The, this is what being an XO in a real military unit yeah, is right. like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of course the um, the um, uh, underneath their names there's another person okay that that's your your basically alpha your oh, okay. your second in command of that section understood um and then below that uh the the little sections there that's you know ba- you're that is what it is you're, you're responsible for these different sections um the ones that are green are the ones that ha- are um have have to be enhanced with civilians so okay. it shows that breakdown. If they're blue, they're pure military. Yeah. So if if any oh, of wow. you out there are wondering what military training, uh, what real world applications <laughs> it has, taxpayer money you goes, can, you can you can look at it, what we got online here, and you can see you know this is just well right. well spent tax dollar money. <laughs> I got a hell of a lot more PowerPoint presentations than firefights under my belt. <laughs> If I had a fucking star for everyone, <laughs> the pen. I'd look like a fucking North Korean general. <laughs> <laughs> the pen is mightier than the sword. Um, also, the the tactical officer is he is the only no, non yeah. pure Imperial Navy. Him and the oh, uh, he's saying. Imperial Marine, which doesn't exist. But fuck it. It sure does now. Absolutely, it exists. I'm not going to have world. naval infantry and not call Marines. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. How can you not it's have like, space. Marines? It's literally a <laughs> right. space marine. What the yes. fuck? Um, also, I love that the tactical stations and the commander of the air group is where the Imperials decided to cede no ground to civilians. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> a little security issue makes, there. Yeah, exactly. It makes total sense. Who's this fucking private schmuckatelli over here? So, um, talk to you guys a little bit. So, CAG. Um, you can see there in your section, uh, the AZ Alpha Zulu 681st Squadron is, um, the backbone of your force. Uh, John, uh, you currently have 11 TIE fighters on station, nine are in service. You have 15 pilots, um, plus the detachment that came from, uh, the DX 77th with the four interceptors. Those just arrived, um, in the last month. Uh, on top of that, the... It's called the the systems detachment. Uh, it's kind of li- a little piecemeal. You have a Lambda shuttle, a medium freighter, a light transport, and two tugs. Okay. Um, you are responsible for all of that. Th- all of the pilots of the, uh, the TIE fighters and TIE interceptors are, are officers, mostly junior from ensigns to uh, lieutenant junior grades, maybe a couple of lieutenants scattered in there. About... Uh, uh, the 22 pilots in the system debt, a uh, pilots and crew are kind of split officers and enlisted. Um, both you and your, your second, uh, Lieutenant Sue are, are also pilots that could, yeah. you know, take, take a mission whenever you, whenever you want. Um, Matt, you have, uh, the two sections you're responsible for, um, the medical section, of course, and then your, the personnel section, the medical section, uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It's, responsible for the the well-being um personal well well-being and health of the entire complement on the station um personnel section 
is kind of in charge of all the administrative you, through that. You also kind of deal with like uh, liaising with Kuiper Corporation, for example, has has an office on the station. Several other shipping shipping companies do um, liaising with the local uh, government um, that kind of falls under your your jurisdiction. Heard. I even put a little rank structure for you on the bottom left hand of the slide. Yay. Uh, it's semi-real, semi-fucking made up. Yep, got it. The Actually, the officer stuff is all pretty much exact. The enlisted is kind of smushed down. I'm trying to make it a little bit more streamlined. And then uh, on the bottom right, there are uh, that little additional personnel. Those are... Those are civilians that are on the station above and beyond the ones that are directly um, part of this fucking structure that are already assigned to a section. They're essentially independent. Got that, it. You know. And this is uh, this is a very much a season one Deep Space Nine sitch because the CO is a commander, not a captain. Yeah. Season three, you think we'll get him up to captain? <laughs> <laughs> um. Dean, as far as you know, looking over the characters, the ones that are jumping out to me are the chief engineer and the communication and intelligence officers. But I love the underworld aspect of the coin. Yeah, pretty that's sweet. pretty appealing. Um, but I could, I could be convinced to do the ops too. I mean, I don't know if there's any that are calling to you. Ops and tactical. If I'm being frank, mm-hmm. I like them both. Um, Ops tactical coin would be my order of preference, uh, or tactical ops coin. I'm, I'm, I don't want to. Um, it's it's weird, you know, having driven a lot of the narrative of the one shot. I don't want to have to feel like I have to be the ops guy and drive a bunch of the narrative. <laughs> yeah, right. So, but I will. I don't mind because I eat this shit up. I mm-hmm. love this. Yeah, shit. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I. I, I, we're all very capable of that role. So right. if you're like, yeah, hey, I want to give it a shot, then you definitely should. Well, no, I mean, Ops wasn't the one calling to me to to start with. So I mean, I'm I'm more apt to pick between engineering and and uh, communications and intelligence. Cool. Uh, Bruins, is there one that nope tickles your fancy, tickles your taint? Yeah, somebody else want to run the game so I can play one character. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. honestly, the more I wrote this stuff, I was like, I'm fucking gonna play this game. <laughs> Damn it! Star Wars is always like that. <laughs> yeah. Like you start getting the taste yeah, of it, yeah, and you yeah, just yeah. want more and more. <clears throat> um, because it's better than what has been coming out. <laughs> don't get, don't shoot, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't start, don't start that. <laughs> <damn all. laughs> um, yeah, like I said, my only preference was that a player did play ops. You know, I don't want to f- force it, but it's just. Ops isn't oh, doesn't hold any command over any of the other PCs, do they? They they're the senior. Oh yeah, there's yeah. In other words, the CEO, the XO, die. Ops is the guy. Yep, I see. Um, but they're not in the business of typically giving other department heads orders, are no, they? Okay. No, just if there has to be a call made, yes. without senior command, the ops would be the guy to make it. Yep, and depending upon and you I would be third relationships between them. You know, it would of be a, yeah. I get you. In, in terms of actual uh, succession, it would go CO, XO, Ops, CAG, Cheng. Yep. Makes sense. So, John, you only got three people to kill to take over. <laughs> <laughs> CAG, CAG has a ton of, ex- makes sense with their experience just in all the flight operations, yep. right? Yeah. And then engineers like, hey, you want to go anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got the keys to this bitch. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I'm I'm uh, deliberating I'll play, I'll play on ops. is uh, like what kind of character I want to play in terms of like um, Do you need personality. A name? I got a fucking name. Yeah, you got a name already? Yeah, nice. Wow, I got a name too. What oh, shit? Jesus. Hang on, let me. Uh... Usually takes me at least three. I'm weeks. an imperial, right? Fuck. <laughs> Titus Redmare. Wait, isn't there a Titus already? I, I use that name. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sent him a name list. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's amazing. Uh, Where is he? <laughs> my XO. Yeah, uh, he's a lieutenant under the CAG. Yeah, he's a fucking pilot. That's dope. All right, fine. I can see that. I got a different. Actually, one. there. Oh shit! There's two Tituses. Oh my the, god! The governor is Titus Redmare. That's throwing, fine. Throwing a third. Titus Sue. Did you use all of them he's for the record? Super. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, let's let's like <laughs> <laughs> so confident. I use so several. Confident. I use several. I just imagine Dean has just when he's doing nothing, he's just writing Star Wars names, <laughs> just like chilling on the couch, dude. I do all kinds of stupid shit like that. <laughs> Vikram, 
It's like the memento. You look at his, his apartment, just t- Star Wars names all around the. <laughs> all over my skin. Yeah. John, what's weirdo. yours? Um, Paro Randar. Or Poro Randar, sorry. P O R R O. P O R R O. Yep. R A N D A R. R R A N? Yep. D A R? Correct. Romeo Alpha, November. <clears throat> you Delta, know what's Alpha, funny? Romeo. I'm really fucking bad at letter comprehension when somebody spells something out loud. What do you mean? Like, un- when you, you sequence? I have to try so hard to pay attention when somebody spells something. Yeah. Like, I, it doesn't just, it doesn't fucking naturally. You, well, your org like chart's that. great, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I do it phonetically, does that help? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Romeo Alpha November yeah. Delta Alpha Romeo. <laughs> Papa Oscar Romeo Romeo Oscar. <laughs> Poro, Titus, there he is. Strong Lieutenant line. Commander Randall. Right? Gotta come up with a uh, call sign. Oh, yes, you do too. Oh, yeah, for I, sure. Why, yeah, no. why did I give you? You used every one of them. <laughs> 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 hey, you gotta hold on to a couple for yourself, you know. Lesson learned. <laughs> it's the I'll, good stash. I'll, I'll show you the fucking text he sent me. Hey, if you didn't want any names. <laughs> I know the text. I fucking made my bed. <laughs> um, did I give you a character sheet, Dean? Yes. I did? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So we have our this fucking kid. medical officer. We have our operations officer. We have the CAG, Dan. Yeah. Let's um, let's go for communications and intelligence. Ah, oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's so my, that's my voice with the character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something very suspicious is going on. <laughs> wow. Five dice and force choke. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. So next step here um, is to, I mean, kind of want you guys to be flushing out the characters best you can in, in your minds as far as personality. Um, I'll say this. You're playing Imperials. I do not want anybody super extreme in either direction, okay? Like, you can't be, like, a die-hard rebel sympathizer just waiting for the chance to convert. (laughs) But I also (laughs) don't... undermines the whole thing. I don't want anybody that is just, like, you know, fucking spoon-fed. You're... Play like real people. Of course. Um, So if... if, In the range of 1 to 10, try to keep your imperial enthusiasm between, like, a 3 to a (laughs) 7. Um... And so, yeah, what I'd like to do is uh, take a sheet of paper and just think of, um, like I said, a, a story. Um, you guys, except for Dean, have done this for fate. Um, so you want is something really simple. Two or three sentences. Uh, it could certainly, it could all, all of this could be in the last six months on Reiko. I think that probably makes the most sense unless you have something in mind for earlier. Um Something that you did, a role that you were involved in, um, something that happened in the system, on planet, whatever. Um, And then you're going to pass that to the left, and that next character is going to talk about either um, how they interact with that story. So generally, uh, the most interesting ways to do it are either kind of add a complication to that story or uh, resolve a, 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 a issue that comes up in part of that story. And um, sometimes they describe it as like in your attempt to resolve it, it creates another complication. Sure. Uh-huh. Yep. Like so, a, like a, like a uh, improv open ended. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. The, and yep. the, or, and yeah. bingo. Um, <clears throat> so, and yeah, so we need, uh, need that um, before we actually start want to hear a little bit uh you know like i said that physical description but especially think of of who would cast you it'd be great to have like a, a real idea in mind there's nothing in anybody's you know as far as uh species age gender height weight all that's up to you it's not impossible for non-humans to be in the empire okay right. Th- it's few and far between so you can definitely play a non-human but realize that it's an uphill battle. Um, I'm thinking Chiss Ascendancy. Is Baby Yoda taken? 
<laughs> is that wow? Yeah, like, why, why did I do this? <laughs> why well, I'm gonna be a Mandalorian. <laughs> I just walk around in my armor all day. Armor. <laughs> it's really smelly. <laughs> oh, and for character points, you can either take five, or you can take a D6 plus two. Oh, yeah. I've learned How's a it? fucking lesson. I'll take five, which nope. which rolling averages higher than five. Mm-hmm. I'm rolling, rolling. <clears throat> this is roll D6 playing plus what? Game. Role playing. D6 plus two. Hey, Josh, what would, uh, if I want to download this sheet so I can uh, make it legible? I can, <laughs> I can, <laughs> I can, oh, no, Josh, can you send it to him? Uh, I did, right? The actual the one uh, I sent you. A blank character right? sheet? You, yeah, you can't read it? I like uh, the picture. For Some of it I can't. Some of it I can't flexing. zoom in to see. Like perception, I can't tell what that top one oh, is. L- let me just, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. It might be easier, Matt, and if anybody wants to, to just restart with a blank sheet and copy it over. Mm-hmm. That's up to you. That's nah, probably not. Um, what's that? Not probably going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I have one blank sheet right here. Anybody wants it? <clears throat> Cybernetics are a thing in Star Wars, right? Uh, yes, not very common. Okay. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you get some cyber parts. Yeah. Well, shut up. I was I was thinking um having his uh, call sign be metalhead and he has certain oh, nice. like part of his skull might have been cracked open and replaced. I like it. Mm-hmm. Chief Engineer Lieutenant Cam Roy and Tactical Officer Captain Grenz Cass. Uh Josh at the bottom of dexterity are mm-hmm. the both of those melee parry vibra blades? Um. Yeah, one of them should just be melee combat. I don't know why I wrote parry twice by accident. Should be melee combat vibro blade, melee parry vibro blade. Um, those are specialties, Matt. Um, so you have melee combat at four dice, melee combat vibro blades at five dice. Word. Your your fencing background. It would be cool if everybody probably thought about. You know, I don't need this formally listed, but why you joined the Imperial military. I, there's a couple of the write-ups that I did mm, kind of shoehorn fine, in the yeah. motivation, but, you know, you can kind of put your own spin on it. Um, I think, yeah, Dan's, I probably put the most into that. Um, All right, we got it. There we go. You know how there's names out there that, you know, historically need some time to recover, like Adolf? <laughs> What do you what do you think about Nero? Do you think Nero's we're far enough away from <laughs> yeah. burning Rome? We're all gonna be named after Actually Rome a long time before. Oh right, right. A long time ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, Josh, I need help Vic? on mechanical. You didn't Does that say okay. swamp name, exhaustion question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Swoop operation. Ah. <laughs> you know, ri- <laughs> oh, I love that swamp operation. <laughs> uh, swamp exhaust. Swoop, Swoop operation. operation. Yep. Swoop operator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And then it's Sun Tears. Sensors. Sensors. <laughs> Holy uh, fucking uh, shit, pal. I think I've got one that says Pinch Bucket. And Repulsor rep- Lift Operations. Okay. Ah, wow. Pink okay. Pocket. That's what it is. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Not Pinch Bucket. <laughs> It looks like you got sick of it halfway through writing it. You just stop, <laughs> stop writing words. Well, like I said, that was just shorthand for me, and then I fucking the, all this other shit. I just fuck it. That's hilarious, dude. Um, the other shit on the character sheet, like I said, um, you can fill out special ability. I'm gonna try to give you guys each one after you guys have your merits. Um, maybe in that box in the top right, if you want to write, um. Uh, have those up there, your merit, flaw, ideal, and bond or bonds. Uh, and then equipment and weapon, you guys can have anything that you reasonably think you would have. Um, you for sure all have sidearms, and you could have, uh, you know, you can requisition basically anything else you need. Okay, strength. Um, swimming? Yeah. Yes, and then climbing, climbing and jumping. 
Jumping. Jumping. Climbing, jumping. Yeah, you're, uh, you know, you, you went to like one of those, you had like the, the rich fucking uh, rich health club thing, you know? <laughs> well, this is going to be a stretch for me to play. I, I like this. It's going to really have to privilege. Think, <laughs> think white. Very, very white. Well, I got my character voice. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, do the do the do the Dave Chappelle white guy voice. Hello. Well, oh, hey there, Karen. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeedly, doodly. <doodly-doodly. laughs> All right, uh, knowledge, alien species, burrowing or bureaucracy. Pick. What do you think? <laughs> burrowing. Your knowledge of burrowing creatures. <laughs> bureaucracy. Uh, alien species specialized in badgers. Bureaucracy. <laughs> Cultures, languages, scholar, business, willpower, and value. Okay. I'm, I minored in mole people. <laughs> <laughs> the film. I yeah. mean, it's. I got alien species. I thought maybe borrowing alien species was <laughs> like... I mean, it's super specific with some of these skills, so... Fair. Fair enough. Got Star Wars fucking... <clears throat> It can't just be, you know, blast repair. It has to be like blaster trigger repair. That's what we that's what we ran into last time we played D6 because I ran a couple of one shots yeah. and we just like the rabbit hole of specialization is crazy. It's outrageous. Yeah. Because remember that? You guys you, you have like couldn't you couldn't so many normally starting <clears throat> fucking dice of, of skills mm-hmm. is seven. Yeah. You guys each have around thirty five. Holy Lord. shit. And I don't think any of these characters are crazy powerful. Mm-hmm. They're just like realistically well-rounded. Right. Experienced. Where they should be in this particular setting. Right. I mean, they're, they're, you're... my name is Marcus Cicero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> Go with it. Just have all Roman names yeah, as a Roman council. <laughs> We're watching fucking Romulan crew. <laughs> Senator Daedalus, what can I do for you? Ah, it's Gaius. Welcome. <laughs> Come here, Cicero. Oh, miss- and and Matt, I'm going to um. Actually, I'll do this later. Never mind. All right, so I should be looking at uh willpower. Is it four or five? Oh, you guys are writing. I'm sure I should be doing that, right? I'm only four D plus two. I, I still have to do like the character stuff, like. I think Matt's just deciphering. Uh-huh. I mean, he's just... He's not <laughs> doing anything. Suck a dick. There must be, there must be a code I, amongst this. Can, can I see this real quick? Yeah. Just so I have an indication, just as a little primer. And you're writing this about you. Yeah. Okay. So we write the first one about ourselves. Yeah. I, I, about an event or something that you that, faced. Yes. And event then, or challenge. Yeah. I mean... And you got to make sure that it's open ended enough that other people can. Yeah, no, interject. I probably won't write this way too. You can't long. be like I. I this chronically won't be way masturbated too long. by um, myself. <laughs> yeah. so, and yeah. To give you, I, I, I do want you guys to, like, if you make shit up that I hadn't planned on, it's going to be in in this. Yeah, s- but it's not on the chart. But but just for like <laughs> My a little. Stepfather, you guys Darth have Vader. you have had run-ins with um yeah some uh uh pirates and smugglers I was thinking that too. out here. Yep. Um, and actually, there have been two engagements in the last week, which has been that's that is not normal. Are are the pirates and or smugglers are any of them part of like a like an organization that's recognizable, like a a rebel group you, or anything like that? You or? guys um are starting to put some information together. If you look at the bottom, when you say you that, guys, mostly me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, so there's a name that's been coming up. Um. Jazir Starfall, um, that you believe is is running this Sounds like some hippie gun. relatively s- local organization um, over a few, but uh, okay, y- you will have a little bit more information. Actually, you that you will be able to introduce. All right, them. Uh, last one, technical, uh, top one, droid programming. Yep, and then bottom, droid programming, medium, M- medical. Okay. Uh, and then the other two are first aid and medicine. I'm thinking of like a medium. Is medicine like a, is like, like a Ouija board, high medium. level, like surgeries and shit like that. First aid is, you know, the more 
more kind of uh on the fly staunching yeah. some wounds and yeah Heard diagnosing down. a disease what what do you guys fucking <laughs> what <do> they miss <laughs> <laughs> Dean's dying. I just, I got, I don't know the the, the medium thing. Second my head is like a. I guess you are using a Ouija mind, board like a medium, like a seance. My mind won't stop with the scenarios. I know it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just that sliding across. The board. Is it? <laughs> Is it tried programming? <laughs> no. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's fucking awesome. Oh, Christ. The C-3PO with a turban on. Matt's like, it's moving by itself. It's moving by itself. <laughs> uh, I got to do writing. All right. So the, 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 sorry. Can I see your character sheet real quick? The Kuiper Corporation established a trade, a, some sort of they negotiated access to the to the um, to one of the planets, one of the locations, by way of negotiating with the new Kaliri. That has nothing to do with the Empire. That's been that's an established relationship pre-Empire. Yes. Okay. So n- New Kaliri is the name of the settlement. I see. Kalerians. Um, but, but yeah, Kalerians are the are the race. Kaliri is their home planet. Okay. Um, the the very clever title it came up with of New Kaleri. And they were they were colonizers themselves. The New Kaleri, yep. So the planet of Kaleri is um is overpopulated, uh, industrialized, and polluted. They bounce. They and find this new spot shortly thereafter. How long after their arrival do they do they get in bed with Kuiper? Do we know? Um, Kuiper is is newer in the last five six years. Okay. Um. As far as any significant ops, maybe they scouted out um, in this colony's twenty years. Yep, got it. So twenty five, and then six months is where we come in. Yep. And piracy began after Kuiper's arrival, or um, <clears throat> to some had you know maybe some occasions before then, but there just wasn't as much shit to pirate. Of course. Um, yeah. They, they, is when you say piracy, is it the is it is it Kuiper's shipping operations that are being targeted? Uh, yes, but also, um, you know, the the population of New Calaria has increased. There's just more goods coming in. There's more stuff going out. Okay. Um, they're now they now export and shit and they, import. Yep, they okay. export, they import. Like I said, the planet has a, a ton of natural resources that are just barely um being being touched at okay. this point. Cool. Um, but the the Population of the planet has has doubled in the last five years since since Kuiper came in. Got it. So so there is traffic to and from this from this planet without Ky- that has nothing to do with Kuiper. Yep, and they could be getting victimized by pirates as well. Yes, got it. And so, again, pretty small. I mean, one hundred fifty thousand people on the planet. Sure. Yeah, that's you know the how, way the how, way things should. How be. big is the planet? Um, s- like smaller than Earth. Like, what is it? Venus size? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, if you think about that, there are some college stadiums that can hold 100K. Yep. Yep. And there's only one significant settlement of, of 30,000 people. And do they have, uh, They I'm assuming they have some sort of uh, police force locally. Yes. So there's there's an imperial governor that, you know, was just established. But before that. And there was a council that. So they had their own little local police, yep. and, and this council still exists. Uh, they're still the NCC is the the nuclear constabulary. Understood. Um, there is a uh, a small garrison on the planet under the governor, um, like a undersized imperial army army company. Got it. Um, that's the only other besides you guys. That's the only other imperial presence in the system. Um, so you're talking less than 150 soldiers on the planet. Plus the constabulary, which is probably triple that, four or five hundred. So, with Kaleri being what it is, they've basically outsourced their defense to the Empire. Yes, it, with a, <laughs> with the exception of local policing of, say, petty crime. Yep. Okay, yep. Got it. Um, and they're think of them. Um, the NCC are like part police, part um, almost like border patrol. There's uh-huh. a lot of ground to cover. Um, Makes the, sense. The planet is very wild. The the wildlife is significantly dangerous. Okay. Um, the 
the weather is pretty rough. I mean, it's in a lot of ways, it is a pretty rugged place to live. Makes sense. Yeah, it sounds like a motivated three or four pirate ships could subdue these people if they really wanted to oh, without yeah. us being there. Yeah. A couple of displays of force, and that's that. Yep. Got it. I'd call the Empire, too. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm asking a lot of questions. It's just yeah, give like me it. context. Are we post uh, the Hoth invasion? Yeah. Okay, so we're feeling good. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Fucking rebels, <laughs> rebel feeling scum are on good. the run. <laughs> rebel scum are on the run. We're feeling good. We're post. We're we're post Death Star, which was a bummer, but we just took Hoth. Veers is is the man. We're talking about him in the beer hall. And then, raise a uh, glass. Raise a glass to Veers, and then um, and now piracy and that type of activity is increasing locally here in in Virax. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Not the galaxy at large. Yep. But here. One last question. Yeah. What are we mining? What's the sign? What's the strategic significance of the material? So the, they have two different main sites. The one of Eric's one is more um, uh, high um, high value alloys. Okay. Virax four. It's sorry. The, what was what planet was that on? Virax one. Yeah. So <clears throat> that is a largely underground mining um, colony, basically. Come on, go ahead and get these people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, at 2,000 workers and staff rotate on planet on three-month shifts. Got that. Um, it's okay. pretty, pretty significant operation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Virax 4 is a gas giant, and there is a, uh, a, a space station in orbit that is a um, – it's basically a fuel extractor. Got it. Um, mm. It has the correct, the, the correct combination of gases for um, – Ion. For fuel of yeah, that mm -hmm. hyperdrive you know, or yes, there is no in system uh, refinement of a level to get like super high grade. You fuel. can yeah. yeah, basically like there's no jet fuel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you can make there's crude, there's crude and there's diesel. Maybe yep. okay, still good to steal. Yes, and yeah. and very useful for use in system. You know on right. on the planet, but also um, to be you know shipped out. Uh, for Kuiper exports to whoever can refine it yep. or, or maybe they have their own refining. Yes, they probably do. Yeah, it makes sense. And then they sell it to various people to put in ships. Yeah. All right, who am I sending this to? Uh, Dean. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Why you make me go last? Well, every, everybody. Every, you're going to get, yeah, you're going to have. I haven't <clears throat> written shit. Mm -hmm. I'm working on mine. I like the way you did this, Matt. This is cool. It's I like the way you wrote it. So it's like you you almost wrote it like here's a situation that that we encountered that I was working on that is a problem, and you kind of left it open ended. That's pretty perfect, actually. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Who am I passing it to? Am I passing it to John? Matt. Matt. Okay. And Matt, you are medical, right? Yeah. Nice. Oh, what um, are you? Um, I am communications and intelligence, but it, it just, I, I hadn't really written this with you in mind specifically, but I think it could work. Um, do you guys have names? Yes. Not yet. Victor Argus, A-R-G-U-S. And Dean, what's your, um, role? I am the, uh, ops officer, Lieutenant Commander Victor Argus, A-R-G-U-S. John, do you have a name? Yep, it's uh, Lieutenant Commander Poro Randar. Horo? Poro, uh, P-O-R-R-O, -R -R Randar, R-A-N-D-A-R. Call sign Metalhead. I have a couple other call signs. Randar? For, my, uh, for, my, for pilots? Yeah. yeah. Cool. R-A-N-D-A-R. Uh, Dan, do you have a name? Yeah, it's uh, Nero Orn. Nero Horn or Orn? O Orn, O-R-N. Word. What's your rank? I... Uh, Lieutenant JG, you, Dan is the least, the, the lowest rank of the the staff officers. Somehow, I don't think that matters for nope. him. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, again, you, it's your own backstory. When I kind of initially had mapped him out, he was definitely going to be the, the newest to the. It's not just like he hasn't been promoted. Sure. He's, yep. Josh. Yep. Help me understand the ops role as it relates to. Just a little bit. I so, know what it is when I'm like watching Star Trek. Operations sure. officer essentially is in, responsible for the 
the operations of coordinating of the all system. of the yes. People. So essentially, everybody like medical is a support role. Mm-hmm. Um, communication intelligence is a support role. Yep. Engineering is a support role. Yep. You oversee the operations of of Reiko seventy two Alpha. Right. So you know, it, in the sense that the CAG is the he's Manager. in charge of his squadron. Of course, but. Ops is responsible for, you know, maybe in conjunction, planning all their operations. Right. So if there was, if, if there was, it, well, if we're all, all things being equal, if there was an emergency per se, um, obviously the CRXO <clears throat> would be making those decisions unless we were in some type of situation where I was, say, the watch officer. Yep. And you certainly would be many times, but you would be, you know, we, the operations officer would be planning like, you know, here's we we need we need escort missions here and here. I want to run yeah. interdictions here. Yeah. Um, training. Got it. Safety. Got it. Um, would it also are, be uh, like a position that coordinates the separate groups? Like if obviously like talking to the engineer regarding the uh, CAGs. Like requirements, or is that that's I mean that's a little more, bit more the XO's role. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. The XO is really yeah. kind of the guy who gets all the departments, okay, working together. Yep. Um. Yeah, I mean, but the, the in charge of the operations is the easiest way to kind of think of it. Um. Got it. So, you know, planning, proposing missions, uh, coordination, coordination, um, and the the two corvettes. Do fall under? I see, I see that under that, and so you. So basically, you you have two sections. You have the deck section, and the hangar section. Um, deck basically runs the station. Yes, like just just the the operation of the station itself. Hangar specifically is the launching and recovery. Yep. Um, and of, of the of the planes, and because you're so under crewed, there's a lot of civilians supplementing both sections, and neither Corvette has a permanent crew right now. You have to pull them from the deck section. You know, they're, I'm sure there's some rotations built in. It's not just like random chaos, but uh, you you particularly feel the pinch of, of your manning situation. Of course. So the junior grade Tal Savin, that's somebody I talk to regularly as well as Avia. Say that again? Avia and Savin, the Corvette, the guys running the Corvettes. Yes. Yep. I'm assuming they talk to me. I oh, talk yeah. to them. Yep. Their performance is my responsibility. Yes. Okay. Like if you were, these would be like your your squad leaders almost. Got it. And they're understaffed. Yes. So we we all are. We all are. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got it. And and so I put, it's post COVID. You know, we just can't get good work. <laughs> Everybody's still collecting. I hate it. <laughs> um. So Lieutenant uh, Shauna Seslin is your is your three the the. The alpha, basically, of your your section, your your second in command. Um, okay. So then, uh, under the deck section, uh, Lieutenant Verlan is in charge of the deck section. Master Chief Petty Officer Drea is in charge of the hangar section. Got it. Um, Lieutenant JG Savin and Lieutenant JG Avea are currently the um, OICs of the oh, another two another question. Yep. Since my role is difficult, dickheads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the Corvettes are are just complete military support, interdiction. Somebody somebody's bu- bumping off the planet, not responding to a hostile challenge issued by the coin. They interdict. Yes, they're both fast in uh, design. They're designed to be in system. Would I have to run to the XRCO daddies before I could make that call, or no? Uh, the watch officer would probably dispatch it, but the CO would definitely be called. Okay, he'd um, be known because if there's an emergency. Yep, of course, red alert type of shit. Understood. What do we say? General quarters, action stations. Mm. Second edition one throughout the fleet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like? Action stations is rad. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Gator, I want to need my birds back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I got a name. All right. What do you got? Dr. Gaius Lachus Vilfug. <laughs> what the fuck? Fuck. <laughs> Gaius, this is, this that's is, straight this from is, the factory, white bro. This is <laughs> yeah. This is like uh, John's elf name. We're gonna get like nine passes on this spelling. All right, Everybody, he's a Roman, <laughs> Doctor Gaius. Spell that, please. Keep Bal- going, Baltar. After Gaius, Gaius yeah, Lachus, 
L A T C H A S, Vilfug, W I L F F U G. That's what you get when you hit the random name gen- generator six times. Under the uh, fantasy name generator country club section. <laughs> yeah. I just went with whichever ones felt the whitest. <laughs> so, Matt, you do have a military rank. You are a, a lieutenant, but you're probably more commonly referred to as doctor. Yeah, because the rest of my names kind of suck. Dr. Wolfug. Wolfug? Vilfug. 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 Nero. What this fucking guy. <laughs> and I will add, there there is rank and seniority amongst the four of you, or really the six of you, um, but it's very much, you, you in a way, you're also all peers. Yes. Um, you are the staff officers of this station. So, you know, it, it, behind closed doors, it wouldn't be weird uh, for you to even like refer to each other by first name, um, even though that's you know technically like you don't do that in the military. You guys have been working together for months, you know, not in a you know off you know off station or whatever. That wouldn't be so. Like, we're more chummy than is that what you're saying? You, you're more chummy than normally like random military people of different ranks would be, because like I said, you you guys are. The staff officers work together to run the station. I'm going to write a one-word response to that. Huh? <laughs> I was going to write a one-word. Cool. Please, please do. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Rad, dude. Neat. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and leave it open-ended. That's fucking open-ended. Who do I give this to? Me. Uh, John. Wait, I didn't put any... I just brought this about me, right? Yeah, you don't have to put me in. Okay. I was like, fuck. I'll I'm put an me. asshole. You put you John's, in. John's going to put himself into you. Yeah. That's real cool. easy. That's pretty. All right. Well, you <laughs> said it, it, it kind of nice like. Uh, what do I do with, with Matthews? Did he send it to you? Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Dude. So so you're going to. This is long. You're going to. <laughs> Give me this back, <laughs> assholes. I don't like anybody at this table. You're, you're going to you're, write. Are you rewriting it? No, okay. Good you're going God. to write yourself into that story. Got it. Um, That's easier. It's usually. It, you know, it, it could be without directly interacting with that person. You know, you could deal with the repercussions yep. of it. You could deal with something that happened Somewhere along the right, way, Matt. or or you could have been directly involved. Doc. Okay. And then you're going to pass that one more time to John, and then John is going to add himself this to the is story. Outrageous! This is a board game. This is fate. <laughs> and you can insert yourself into any portion of the story. It doesn't have to be the end, right? You can kind right. of like sure. yeah. yeah, a little. A little, a little, a little house of father. A little slipping it in the middle. You can insert yourself any way you like, oh, you know. Damn. Any hole you choose. Dan's uh sent his to Matt. Matt's gonna send that on to you. Okay. I'm going to roll three dice. So, oh, I gotta roll for um whatchamacallit, right? You're rolling for character points? Yeah, I'm gonna go black and red. That's some imperial I shit. I got six. Wait, one. One D six. One <clears throat> Oh oh oh. I thought you were one D six <laughs> roll it plus up. two. <laughs> one D six plus two? Yep. <laughs> oh! Shot to the heart. <laughs> Shot to the heart. Was it a one? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna flip oh. oh, let me guess. Let me guess, Matt. You got a six? Oh, I haven't rolled yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll, hey I'll, I'll roll on camera. I'm just kidding, dude. It's called role playing, Dan says. So remember, with character points, they're also your experience points. You you can use them in game, but they're also the only way Thanks, that babe. you advance skills and abilities. I'm not putting fucking meters. If there's anything the Empire gets right, it's the use of the metric system. Hundred <laughs> percent. We got that right in our future game. <laughs> Bless you, Dean. Usually I'm the last one at all this shit, but now I've got someone. Yeah, here. don't worry. <clears throat> all right, sorry, Dean. I gotta. I'm sending you. It's okay, buddy. Dan's now. I ain't no rush, bro. How the fuck do you spell bureaucracy? Uh, it's with E's and U's and all that <laughs> terrible. There's an A in there somewhere. U R E A U. E A U. John, I assume this is some sort of firefight, but it looks like it says furball. Furball, yeah. Furball? Yeah. As in furball. Yeah. As in like hair. That's and... what they call it. What the f- in aviation, a furball is a large engagement of fighter aircraft. Furballs Fake are news. featured Fake news. immediately throughout Ace Combat. Ace Combat, whatever. 
Uh, and what does ferrocrete mean? Concrete, but it's Star Wars concrete. <laughs> Space concrete, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> Nerd. Uh, Transparent steel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yippee. We just say concrete, bro. It's fine. Bro, I, no, I'm I, not I buying a Star Wars dictionary. You did it. Oh, holy I fucking shit. Did it. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like we didn't have maybe um, as critical a... Because usually with fate, you're trying to pull an idea yep. from it. I, I just want this to kind of... This is more yeah. like to just kind of create some yep. and then, background to our characters. Right. Yeah. And then kind of maybe this kind of one... Get these going, read them out loud. Then I'm going to say, okay, guys, let's get those those four things. Yep. And maybe some of it will some get pulled it will from there. Some of it. Um, yep. Oh, interesting. You know. Fate's kind of cool uh, because you're creating, Dean, like you're creating different, um, essentially goals in a lot of ways uh, right. to, to gain or advance your character. Uh, and it's the stories that you pull those goals from. It's cool. That makes sense. Yeah. I like it. Uh, right. Am I going to be three. handing this to somebody to finish, or is no, it done? We, no, we three, just, is three. three is the the okay. Kind of good to you know. I don't like your tone when you said that. Hmm? <laughs> Hand this to somebody to finish. <laughs> Does it need my stroke of brilliance, or am I going to give my creation to a fucking numbskull? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Paper right? <rate>. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, neato. All right, I'm done. Danimo. Thank you. Nice, man. Um, is everybody done? Uh, I'm almost done. No, so I still have to, uh, do, send do my, mine and dance to Wally. Yeah, okay. All right. No worries. Dean, so you're hard. done. You've done all, f- you three, you've written three times. Have I? You started yes. one, you responded to two. Yes. Yes. Did I respond to two? Yes, you responded. Did I respond to yours? And uh, n- no. Did I respond to Dan's? You responded yes. to Matt's. Yep. And then you responded to Matt's and Dan's. Yep. Lovely. Lovely. Very nice. That's great. <laughs> Let me go ahead and finish writing in my skills because I've only some, got What's your <laughs> What's your character's <laughs> name, Dean? Victor. Victor. Last name Argus. A R G U S. Commander works. Okay. <laughs> Sir, do you? <laughs> he just got finished saying we're all like buddies. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> uh, fucking Sir. <laughs> I just go like this. <laughs> Point uh, to the fucking insignia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shoot your cuffs. And you would say, like, by the way, uh, Lieutenant Commander, if you were going to say that, you, you know, if you were going to refer to him, right? you would say Commander Argus. Yeah. Okay. Like, you wouldn't. St- Unless like a formal setting, you wouldn't say like Lieutenant Commander Argus. Same thing like Lieutenant JG, just, just called Lieutenant. Lieutenant. You don't just say Lieutenant Junior Grade every time. <laughs> Dean, uh, do you have a sense of whether you're going to be um, total uh, asshole on the galleon from day one in this six month stretch, or like later on? Oh, interesting. On the galleon from day one, I would imagine. Okay, so uh, yeah, I just want to have a sense of how long I've known you for. Probably the whole time. I think a, an ops officer would probably be one. Of, he'd probably be one of the first people over there yep. to make sure there's a good communication between the departments, etc. All right, I sent. Uh, I sent you the response, John. Yep. Ten four. Copy that. Roger. So just want to make it clear: we we are all waiting for Dan. No? Yep, hundred okay. percent. Good. Oh, I did good. I wasn't the last place. If you guys want to start. The other things, like I said, before we actually uh, kick off the live game, want to f- fill in those. If you want to kind of look back through your stories, we're going to read them aloud too. But um, start thinking about a merit, a flaw, an ideal, and at least one bond. If you want to, if you end up with more than that, but one, at least one with another PC. And of course, who's going to play you? Can't be an actor that was already in Star Wars, can it? <laughs> <laughs> I already have my actor. Sure. Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot that guy! <laughs> somebody, somebody get that guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. This happens all the time. This happens all the time. 
secure him in the brig. Whoa, 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 whoa. I am the calm guy. <laughs> You're a rebel spy and a traitor. Take him away. <laughs> okay. Um. So, everybody's done, right? With this, that part of it? That part of it, yeah. I'm still working on the other shit. Well, I gotta, I gotta roll for these uh, oh, character points. Character points. Oh yeah, me. same. Ready roll. or not. Hope you roll a one. Let's see. Two. Fuck you, fucking two. Deserve it. <laughs> 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 All right, ready, <laughs> John. You, you, so bad. I rolled. I had a four plus two, so six. Oh. I saw it. Four. He did. I got a four. Matt. Oh. What? Oh, oh, we're watching live. Three. Three. All right. Wow. High, high roll was four. We got a one, two, three, Yikes. and a four. Hmm. Um, and those are, those are. Uh, so remind me, are, can those be broken down into pips or are those character points? Yeah, no, character points are so, pips. Uh, no, character points are two things. Mm-hmm. One is you can use one at any time to add a a d six, an exploding d six, right? An exploding d six. Um. And you can do that after you roll. Okay. Um, you can also use them to. Th- th- that's also how you increase your skill, your your skills. Um, and it costs to improve a skill, uh, improve one pip. So and and Matt, because I, I know you haven't played a lot of this, and all of us because we're pretty new to it. So. There is basically three pips per dice. So if you have a skill that's 3D plus one, you advance it again, it goes to 3D plus two. If you advance it again, it goes right to 4D. Does that make sense? All right, so the highest you can get is plus two before it goes up a, a D6. It rolls over. Exactly. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so all skills will either be, you know, blank number of dice, plus one, or plus two. Um, to improve a skill... Uh, it costs the number of character points that it's currently at. How many dice? So to go from 3D to 3D plus 1 costs 3 character points. Same thing to go from 3D plus 2 to 4 costs 3 dice. It's whatever whatever number is in front of the D. Um, if it's a specialization, so that's a subcategory, it costs half that number. So if you have a specialization that's... Um, 4d plus two and you want to move it up to five it only costs two points half of the half of the four attributes to improve an attribute costs 10 times so if you want to wow improve your strength one pip and you your current strength is say 2d plus one it costs 20 character points holy shit yeah however improving an attribute improves every skill you have under that right so if you go up um one in technical if you go from like 3d to 3d plus one every technical skill you already have also goes up by a pip so yeah i mean if it's your main skill and you have like eight fucking skills in it Mm -hmm. it you probably get more juice out of increasing the whole thing i'm a a, i was a big fan of pips is there a skill um i want to make sure i read this right value yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's basically like, you know, um just in terms of estimating the what's the what's the what's the word for that? There's another word. Hmm. Missed it. Value. Um page. Yeah. D D. It's in D and D. I know I know what you're talking about. Um What do you what, what do you what's, what's the discussion? What's the D, what's the D and D skill for determining value? Appraise. 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 Jesus, Jesus Christ. Or, you know, a word. <laughs> All right, tell me the things you want me to to, to give you. Not, I don't have force power, so don't have to worry about that. Merit, flaw, and, ideal. And you don't even mean in game term. No, yeah. no. I'm going to try to take your merit and give you a special ability, but don't worry about that. I won't. Mm. Ideal and what? Uh, flaw, flaw and bond. bond. Got it. And a bond is specific with one other character. If you have the juice from your little story writing sessions to have multiple bonds, go, go for it. I dig it, brother. This is going to just be, it, it's like we did with um, yeah. One Shot. It's just ways to to pass out more character points. Yeah, I learned a lot from that, so that's good. And we might, as we develop these personalities, we might have an opportunity to, to alter these a little Absolutely. like last time. Okay, yeah. Yep. 
<clears throat> yeah, and especially if it, you know, story wise feels like it's resolved, and that doesn't mean go away. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like we did with with Adric's courage. Adric didn't not become courageous or become less courageous. We just kind of altered it. Had hit it sure. enough time story wise that we wanted to pull out something maybe new. Uh, what is what is merit again? Um, you know, just something your you know character is uh, particularly gifted at. Um, something that that you're uniquely good at. It can be a you know, and and I don't want it to be like a very straightforward mechanical thing, like you know, using a scalpel, <laughs> you know, like uh, you know, just, just a descriptor. I don't know. What. And uh, yeah, we definitely can feel free to modify these as we go. So I was thinking that um, Randar was fairly new addition to the space station. Um, they had a they had a couple flights and maybe a interim squadron commander, but um, because of the tie interceptor group and the expected increase of the fighter wing for the space station, they decided to bring in a an actual combat air group commander. Okay. Um he is new to that position. He was a squadron lead um and newly was promoted for this position. Cool. I like it. But a bit late in his career. Okay. So how long do you think you've been on? Probably two months. Two months, okay. Yeah. Probably came with the tie interceptors. Cool. Was that your old squadron? Yeah, let's say Maybe. that. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. I mean, it could be. He may have been an, a TIE Interceptor pilot and requested that. Well, when they moved him over, part of that was moving his flight over. Cool. You prefer Bonds to be with other PCs, right? Yes. Okay, no problem. So, so I have a Bond. I mean, if, if you have a Bond with an NPC, I just w- want at least one of them with a PC. Understood. I have a Bond with Victor as uh, proving my worth as a new CAG. Since he's kind of the old guard, okay, and he's me, Victor. Yeah, oh yeah, that's my name. As a uh, senior, <laughs> senior I'm a, officer. I'm a dumb dumb. All right, so we've done some writing here. We have our tales. We have some of our um, character elements. Um, so I want to read these. How do you want to do this? Do you want to each kind of read your contributions, or have each person read all their the their? Yeah, all the way through. What do you think makes more sense? Maybe all the way through seems to make the most sense narratively to okay. like pay attention to, but maybe say who wrote it if you want to sure. give credit all right. if you're into that. So let's start off with you, Matt. Ooh. Um, so why don't you read <laughs> ooh, um, why don't you read uh, what you wrote and then read the two follow alongs and just say who, who wrote those parts? I will do my best. None of us have great handwriting, so bear oh. with me. Uh, so I wrote, reports had come from Virax 1 via Kuiper Mining Dust Junkies. I just, fuck, hold on. I thought that a few- <laughs> At least you didn't say dust bunnies. That sounds so yeah. racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so it should. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Reports had come from VRX-1 via Kuiper Mining Dust Junkies. I thought that a few crates of antibiotics would take care of the symptoms of the infected. It wasn't until I was able to obtain a fresh blood sample that it was clear that smugglers had obtained a new source of spice. Nice. And then... Dean's reply. I came across the doctor's report and... Grew concerned as the symptoms of the infection appeared in one of the CAG's pilots. And then John's reply, Dash would be on double duty as soon as the doc was done with him. It was a good thing Vilt... Oh, that's my name. Viltug. (laughs) Viltug. I was like, what the fuck is that? That close. Go in, that's me. That was so (laughs) good. That's my name. <laughs> uh, so John's reply, Dash would be on double duty as soon as the doc was done with him. It was a good thing Vilfug had his eyes upon open to the troubles of the of living in the outer rim. Cool. All right. Uh, Dan. Awesome. Did you follow up? Sure. Uh, so um, 
Nero's kind of opening story, uh, the report regarding the possible location of a shipment of smuggled goods sat on Nero's desk. He knew what they were moving, medical supplies. With one simple calm, he could snap them up, get another gold star on his questionable record. Or it could sit there, and the time for action would pass. What to do? And then uh, Matt's response, <clears throat> the doctor's response. After looking over the quarterly reports, Gaius noticed a discrepancy in requests for anti-radiation meds from Virax 4. With the amount of crew out there, it was clear that they were getting supplies from elsewhere. As with all issues of this sort, chain of command was everything. And the final reply from Victor or Dean, uh, Gaius approached me with a logistics concern. Obviously, a 25% decrease in medical supplies raises concerns. I had hoped to propose an investigation to the XO, but decided to keep it off the radar of the Compnor. Compnor stooge. I'm currently deciding how to keep from the prying. I'm currently deci- deciding how to keep the prying eyes out uh, thorn without keeping the XO in the dark. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> another right. In other words, nation. <laughs> In other words, once I realized there was a discrepancy in the medical supply requests, a huge drop, I was like, I should, I want to propose a plan to the XO to investigate this, but I also know that Compnor's sniffing around the XO mm-hmm. and the CO. Is a problem. So I haven't yet because I don't like Comp Force. Cool. I, I yep. prefer the loyalty of you guys mm-hmm. to the Compnor stooge. Yep. Like it. Cool. John is. We were tasked with hunting down rebels who attacked the Death Star. We found a small flight of X-Wings hiding in an asteroid belt. A fur ball ensued, and my wingman got separated. Had the rebel bastard dead to rights, but had to disengage to help. Uh, Nero's reply, Dan. <clears throat> Thorn, the fates must have a sense of humor. I never heard of a comp force officer with the name more apt. I haven't seen any ferrocrete evidence that this starfall is alliance, but I know... Uh, CF is always trying to sniff out sympathizers. (laughs) (laughs) Watching Matt. He's so mad at the terminology. I fucking love it. Just when he says pharaoh crete instead of concrete, watching Matt just go like that. (laughs) He's sick. He's so mad. I love it. Uh, It made my fucking night. Second Matt. <laughs> you just teamed a, up with some fucking nerds. Just the <laughs> word, just the words going through his head that he can't say. Oh my That's god! So good. Uh, that was like fucking Chinese to me. <laughs> <clears throat> I want this guy off my back. I was reading Randar's action report. He did pull up on that X-wing. He had him quote unquote dead to rights. Mm. And then the doctor's reply. O2 deprivation is a career ender after about three minutes, no matter how well trained a pilot is. If Randar had wasted any time getting his man back, he would be down a pilot. Hunting rebels or not, I'm not going to clear unfit pilots for service. Groovy. And finally, Dino. Let's see if we can do this. <clears throat> Let's see how good we are at reading out loud. <laughs> our, our own words. I hate, when the, I hate when the teacher calls me. I can read their it's shit better. on Phonics mine. podcast. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to write, that's for sure. Poor Dan. Uh, during Delta Watch, an unidentified vessel was heading off world. Nero issued a hostile challenge. The vessel did not respond. After deploying the phalanx to pursue and after coordinating with the local military, we decided we needed to interdict. I sounded action stations and the vessel jumped away. Once the CO came to the bridge, an explosion occurred on the surface of Virax 1. Fortunately, no one died. Dan's reply. My reply. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, John. The pilot. Critical man. reading. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just going to fucking pilot, tank man. this. Out of... <clears throat> out on training ops with Hunter Flight, I saw the communication from Victor. I asked him to give us time to intercept before sounding the alarm. Victor called the protocol, <laughs> and the alert went up. Our query was gone. The man needs to learn when to bend the rules. Danimal's reply. Nero. 
I now have a problem. I can't be sure, but the unidentified vessel has a lot of similarities to the ship that was carrying those medical supplies. I need to unfuck this. Commander Argus, by my measure, has been benign. Hopefully he doesn't report me to Thorn. Up to no good. <laughs> Up to your old tricks no again. Tricks. Okay, and then um, let's do the same thing, and I know we don't have them all, but uh, anything you guys have for merit, flaw, ideal, and bond, starting off with, uh, with you, Matt. Go ahead. God, I didn't realize I drew the fucking short straw today. <laughs> Head of the class. Uh, so hey, uh, you're playing a very white character, so this is what it feels like. You, <laughs> you get to go first. You're, bud. you're first in line. Yep. Well, <laughs> welcome to the country club. <laughs> well, Gaius Lactus Vilfug, his merit is climbing the ladder, i.e. <laughs> right? you, guys, you guys say that shit, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, all the time. time. <laughs> yeah, so bunch facto, of, bunch of ladder climbers at this fucking table. Uh, he uh, he's gonna follow chain of command. He's uh, he's he's from a well-off family, so he's not so necessarily into the military structure. Is Going the medical route for, uh, what is, it, is it the Imperium? Imperial forces? Yeah. Uh, going the military route was uh, was going to be a great, great way to get his ideal, which is to advance the family name. Cool. Nice. Matt, do you, does, have you <laughs> kind of had a vision for the doctor to like, um, in terms of what his specialty, like in medicine might be? Or, I mean, I'm just asking in terms of... He's got a, he's got a very yeah. nuanced view of yeah. white folks, that's for sure. <laughs> he's a gynecologist. <laughs> Combat gynecologist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Um, Can I kind of see how the how the story plays out before I think I I make any uh, bonds. But I do have a... A flaw, which I think you'll all relate to, is an air of superiority. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about at all. I, uh, <laughs> Completely <laughs> unfamiliar. Completely ignorant of privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Trading places. Dan? Um, <clears throat> I've got uh, three out of the four. I got a merit, which is nine lives. Uh, say what you want about Nero, but the man has nine lives. When you think there's a, no way out, he finds a way. Oh, um, did you do casting. Yeah. Oh yeah, Matt. Who did you did you cast someone for your? No, not yet. Your, okay. Um, the <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Who's the whitest? The whitest? <laughs> uh, ideal is the galaxy doesn't care. Uh, the galaxy doesn't care who sits on the throne. We're all on our own. Um, his flaw is criminal record. Nero is here in some sense as the best of two bad options. Uh, his record is not a well-kept secret, and he's aware that it's an uphill battle to make his way uh, in the Imperial forces. Really good. Um, and then I don't have a bond yet, but I figure I'll make one. And then for character casting, I think um, the new Blade Runner, Jared Leto. Nice. Cool. Mm. Nice. nice. Jared Beard. Out of regs. Write them up. <laughs> Write them up. <laughs> You're looking at me. <laughs> John. Uh, <clears throat> Lieutenant Commander Poro Metalhead Randar. Uh, he is, his merit is he inspires through action. He's very much a, a, a leader by doing, uh, not by telling. Um, his ideal is he brings out the best in those around. Um, he's really uh, loyal to his team and to his wingmen uh, first and foremost and those who are loyal to him uh, his flaw in doing that and performing that ideal he uh, he'll bend the rules when necessary uh, which gets him in hot water with the imperial um, imperium uh, I do have two bonds one with Victor since uh, Randar is fairly new to his command at this uh, facility he is trying to prove his worth to kind of the, the old guard of Victor. Um, 
And uh, with Nero, he's just trying to keep uh, intelligence out of his hair. Uh, and actor, he is a uh, Viper from Top Gun. Tom. Uh, Beautiful. Tom Skerritt. 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 Love it. <clears throat> but with the uh, partially gone skull with metal, uh, like a cyborg, cybernetic showing. Robo Skerritt. Yeah, yeah Robo Skerritt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dean. Yes. How do I start again? Honest God. Uh, Merit flaw ideal bond we're doing. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um Victor Argus. Did you do did you know about the character? What's wrong with me? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm just listening to I'm listening to broke now. I'm on high alert. I'm on high alert. Yeah, yeah. Well uh it, You did that, right? We'll you said who you are yeah. characters when we actually get the this okay. is still Sesh Zero shit. Got it. So we already know I'm playing. My name though is Victor Argus. He's a commander. Lieutenant Commander, technically. Um, for Merritt, I put he has a calming presence. Uh, the operations role, I imagine, is one of those roles in which you do a lot of interdepartmental, intra-departmental coordination, and that can become very overwhelming with various people offering many demands on what they need for their departments, and that kind of falls on you to see that they can get that or they can't and what we're going to do to fi- help them fix their issues. So... People often come to him in a panic, and he's got a very calming presence. Think Sam Neill, Red October. He's got a very calm way about him. But much like Sam Neill in Red October, who I imagine playing Victor Argus, he's got a um, competitive on a good day, which is why he's been able to excel, but very vindictive on a bad. Okay. Vindictive on a bad day is his flaw. Okay. Um, I don't really have an ideal written for him yet, other than, you know, he, the, the team is everything to him. Everything he's ever accomplished in the military has been because he's paid attention to the team, and he's and he's taken he takes seriously the opinions around him, and the and the skill set around him, despite who it may come from, which leads me to my bond. He has a bond with Nero insofar as he considers him a pet project. But he also is aware that Nero is very skillful. He brings an entire different skill set to the imperial military structure. Um, uh, the most unique one that Argus has ever experienced has been at the hands of Nero because he comes from a criminal background, literally. He doesn't see this all the time, and he wants to be able to utilize that skill and learn about the man and just try to become friendly with him you know, without judging him. And basically that, like, wow, what an interesting person. Like, this is so atypical for Imperial people. Cool. I like it. <clears throat> He's uh, fascinated by him, essentially. To, to round out your the other department heads, um, first you have Lieutenant Cam Roy, R-O-Y-E, played by Michael Cudlitz <laughs> in Band of Brothers. Which one is he? No, I know who he is, but which which department? Uh, this is uh, Cheng, chief engineer. The tactical officer is Captain uh, Grenz Cass. And he is played by Matthew Settle. Went went back to the... This kid's in the well. Back to the fucking well. <laughs> uh, who plays Captain Spears on Band of Brothers. Um, just has kind of a quiet intensity about him. And uh, lastly, we have, uh, he's not technically, obviously he's not a department head. Oh, comp, no, but, comp force. Uh, Lieutenant Thorne, a slightly younger version <laughs> of <laughs> Tim Curry in Red oh October. <laughs> Ooh, what about the men? Captain, what about the men? All right. <clears throat> so, uh... I think that'll about do it for our our Seshiro. Um, I'm excited. And uh, look forward to getting into the game. Yes. Yeah.
Das Nasty.